Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Coming at you with Judges chapter 18, and it's just more stupidity. It's just more people doing whatever the heck they want to do. It's more of just people being sinful, fallen, stupid people. It's all it is. Um, it's kind of hard to like give verses with an overview, or at least I'm kinda, I, was, I try to put it together in my head. I'm like, I think a summary would just kind of do it best. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the chapter's a little bit on the long side, but of course I'll encourage you to read that as well as the entire book of Judges, as well as the entire Old Testament, as well as the entire Bible. Good book. Lots of good lessons. This is how not to live a godly life. This is how to fail at life. So we've got Micah and his Levite priest in his household over his molded image in God and over his ephod. So a bunch of guys from the tribe of Dan are like, well, we haven't gotten there. We haven't gotten a place for us amongst the, amongst the tribes of Israel. What are we going to do? So they sent out five spies who were mighty men of valor. And they came into the mountains of Ephraim. And they found, uh, they found Micah's house and they recognized the voice of the Levite priest. And they're like, hey, what are you doing here? And he's like, yeah, Micah made me his household priest. And they were like, could you inquire of God? to see if what we're going to do is going to work. And he said, go in peace, and the Lord, Yahweh, be with you. And so they go back to where they came from after finding a little town called Laish. And Laish was like this really peaceful, quiet place. They weren't really connected with anybody, so, you know, no real network, no walls of protection, no personal army. So they go back to their brethren, and they're like, hey, found this great place, and we have God's blessing to go there and take it. So they get 600 men, march to Laish, and on the way there, those five guys are like, hey, by the way, as we're going to Laish, there's this household on the way. It has a priest and an idol and all these other cool things. What do you think? And they were like, you know what? We'll take the stuff. So they rob Micah. And not only of all of his stuff, not only all, like all the, what is, it, what is it, the carved image, the ephod, the household idols, and the molded image, they also took little ones and livestock and the goods in front of them. That's from verse 21. They took all of that stuff. So the priest goes up to them and he's like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, be quiet, put your hand over your mouth, and come with us. Isn't it better for you to be a priest and a father over the entire over an entire tribe of Israel in just one household. And then verse 20, so the priest's heart was glad and he took the ephod, the household idols, and the carved image and took his place among the people. He was glad to go. He helped him rob Micah. Micah um, gathers a few people from the houses around him, catches up to this troop and says, what are you guys doing? And they were like, and they, and they were like, what's your problem? And he's like, you took everything out of my household. What do you think my problem is? Paraphrasing all that. And so they're like, um, you might want to shut your trap or you might die. And he saw that they were 600 armed men. And he was like, okay, I can't do anything. And he just trotted on back home. They went and destroyed this peaceful town that had networks to no one. And they set up those stupid idols and now I do want to read this verse. It's verse 30. Then the children of Dan set up for themselves the carved image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. Now, the captivity of the land, I haven't done a lot of research on that. I'm not sure if that was written in regards to the captivity of the entire nation of Israel, which is much later on in the book of Kings and Chronicles, which means judges would have a very late date for writing, or it's just referring to the next group of people who decide to take over the Israelites at this point in time. I'm not sure which. Um, of course, chronologically speaking, I think after after judges, after all of this bull crap here, then Samuel's raised up as a judge, and immediately after that, Saul is appointed king. So, if that's the case, and I'm not saying it is, because who knows? My thought is, who knows what happened between this time and when Samuel arose and became the judge, um, and immediately after him was Saul. I don't know how much time was passed. It could be that Judges was written very late. 
But yeah, so they have this carved image and they have a false line of priests for quite a long time. So this dumb little thing Micah did on the side, more dummies came along and they set up an idol, a false god that captivated the men and the tribe and, and the women and children of the tribe of Dan all the way up until whatever captivity befell the land. And then verse 31, so they set up for themselves Micah's carved image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. So you have a bad man, a bad priest, a, gr a bad group of spies, a bad group of men coming upon a peaceful town, robbing the man, taking the, pr the false priest, him, the, priest, the false priest giving them bad guidance from a god he doesn't even know, and obviously doesn't worship because there's an idol there, it's just this mishmash of everything that God told them not to do. Everything God told them not to do. Even the soldiers were commanded, if you come upon a place in war, you declare to them terms of surrender before attacking. So, ugh. I'd like to think, hey, maybe they took over a city that they were supposed to have conquered beforehand. Maybe they were obeying the Lord. But obviously they weren't obeying the Lord because they took a false priest and a false idol and set them up over their tribe. So it's very hard for me to believe that they got the um, conquering the right city part right. Seems they just attacked the most peaceful, pleasant city they could with the littlest chances of repercussions to do what they needed to do. So it's a giant mishmash of more stupid, of more selfishness and sinfulness, and just reading it irritates me a little bit. But hey, it's history. It's in the Word of God. And it's there to show us what not to do. This is a good example of how to fail at life. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you, and God bless.